Resin Art Lazy Susans make a beautiful centerpiece for anyone's table. Look at these colors. Let's start this project now and I'll show you how to do it. Hi again everybody, it's Janet here for Moon Cusser Art and I'm going to be doing a Lazy Susan project today. I've done these in the past. I really like doing them. They're popular with people. So I picked this up at a discount store and it's bamboo. So let's get this unwrapped. There we go. And there's the turntable on the back. So what I like to do is I like to remove these. It's got a Phillips screw. So we can just take that right off of there and get it out of the way. This pops off. Easy peasy, got a little hole on the back there. And what I like to do is I like to paint mine. So first time I did one, I wanted the resin, of course, to roll over the edge. And as resin will do when it's going across a side like that, it gets very thin. And so I could actually see the wood through there. So, what I am going to do is I'm going to tape off the back. And if you guys have been watching my channel, you know I like to use the 3M painter's tape. And I just take that, whoops, it just popped off of on there. And I just take it right up to the edge. You want to make sure you don't get any kinks in your tape. If you get a kink in your tape when you're putting it down, it's going to leave a spot and potentially have the resin get underneath that. So I'm going to get that pressed on there and just finish going all the way around. Okay, and then I'm going to take a razor blade just a plain straight edge razor blade, and I'm going to trim that really close. One of the other things I'm going to do is, I'm going to burnish. I use, I like to use, this is just a Sharpie marker I have laying around, it's plastic. I don't know why, it's soft. It works really nicely for me to get a nice tight, you can actually see the shape of the board. So it really works well to warm up the adhesive of the tape and gets a really nice stick onto that wood. That's what I'm going for. I do not want any of the resin to seep underneath because I want the back to be wood. I want people to know when they're looking at this that they're gonna have a wood turntable, Lazy Susan, whatever you want to call it. So, get that done. And then I am not going to try to film cutting the tape because I'm going to have this thing twisted and turned in all different directions to make sure I get a nice clean cut. And once I get that cut, we're going to go outside and hit it with some spray paint. Okay, there it is, guys. It's all taped, all trimmed. I've got my paint ready. i take it outside. There's the edge. Nice and clean. All right, let's go spray paint. Okay, I'm out here in the yard, and it is about 85 degrees today. It is really quite warm. And... Yes, I like to use old kitty litter buckets as a stand. So let's hit this with some spray paint. I like to start on the edges. I'm gonna start on the edge. And I'm just doing some really light bursts. And I'm just gonna go all around doing that. It might take two coats. We shall see. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just to block out the wood because when I go to pour with the resin, like I said, I don't want to see the wood on this side. 
and uh, it'll leave a background because I'll use white as one of my colors so then it leaves a nice background. I might have to, uh, because it's so humid out here today, oh, and there's bugs, and that guy's gonna die. Kamikaze bugs. Come on. Yeah, sorry I got you, buddy. I don't wanna go too heavy. If you go too heavy, then you start getting drips, and I do not want drips. Doing quick bursts. A little dent there, but that part will get covered up. That's probably why it got put to the discount store. But resin will make it beautiful. I think you guys all agree. And then cross the top. Some quick ones and then I can come back and do another layer if I feel I need to. I hate seeing, you know, you can see the variations through there and you know, that's just me being a little weird making sure that everything will be consistent. Okay, that's going to be good enough for the first layer of paint. I'm definitely coming back to do a second one, but I'll probably bring it inside because, like I said, it is humid here in New Jersey. For this project, I'll be using Counterculture DIY Artist Resin. It's their original mix, and it is heat resistant up to 500 degrees. Perfect for this application. There's a discount code in the description box, and here are the other products I'll be using. Some of the Archery Creations pigments. I have System 3 White. I also have some Arty Sue pigments, as well as a Perlex Mica Powder. I wanted to show you that I'll be doing a custom color. I'm using the Arty Sue Metallic Pigment, the Bright Gold. That's in the cup, and I'm just going to mix that through real quick. Get it stirred in nicely. It's a beautiful color. It gives really nice effects. Some nice lacing comes up when you're using it. But I want to get some of that lift from a mica powder. So I'm adding into the metallic pigment. I'm adding the Perlex. This is their Aztec Gold. That's about a half a teaspoon. And I'm stirring that right into the resin. It's about, I would say this is about two ounces of resin that I've batched up. So I'm just stirring that right in. The mica powder combines in really nicely. And you can see how it changes that color. Then I like to add 99% alcohol, just a few drops. And when I drop it right there on the surface, you can see how it's pushing the resin a little bit. And that's why I like to add it. It helps to lift those pigments out. So here we go. We're going to start with the Artie Sue teal. It's a nice, rich, dark teal. And I want that effect against that white on the board. It will not be transparent. This color is opaque. And it's nice to combine opaques with transparents and also with metallics because it gives you some really good variations in your color on your products. Here we go with some of the Art Tree Creations. This is the turquoise blue. This is a transparent color, so I'm trying to put it right up against that opaque so that as I move the colors on the board, I'll get some effects from that. Again, this is Art Tree Creations. This is the aqua, and this one is also an opaque color. So I'm putting that in having it touch areas where the transparents are, and just free pouring wherever I feel like I like the colors up against it. All right, and let's grab that gold we've batched up, and we're going to put that, whoop, 
Wait, we'll pop a couple bubbles. I mixed it really quickly, so there's a lot of bubbles, but because it's on a flat surface, it's easy to pop those out. All right, so let's put in the gold, lay that in against all different types. Again, the transparent, I've got two opaques, and now I'm adding in this metallic. So we'll just lay that on there. Come in with the torch again to pop any of the bubbles. And now let's grab that heat gun. It's on a medium heat setting. I don't want to make this resin too hot. It has a work time of about 45 minutes. So I'm just using that to push the resins up against one another. Not resins, but the pigments. And they'll start to blend and move and drift. And that's what gives you some nice looking effects. Now I want to make sure that I get good coverage over my edges. So I'm taking that dark teal and I'm applying it at the edge and I'm also filling in any open areas that I have left on the board. Remember this is a board made from bamboo wood and I spray painted it with two coats of the Rust-Oleum to seal that board and also to give me a nice background that's going to let light bounce back out of that transparent color. It really makes it shine. I want to ensure that I get good coverage over the edge, so I'm taking my gloved hand and I'm rubbing that color just to make sure that it's completely coated with the resin. If I just allow it to drip, I could have empty spots, and that's not what I want. I want to completely seal everything. So I'm taking my time, using my fingertip, working it in. I don't want to interrupt that drip pattern as it moves over the board. So I kind of do it as I see using what's spilled over the edge already and applying it into those spots. Get nice coverage and go all the way around, just like that. All right, I think I have it now. Let's move back to working with the heat gun. I want to keep the resin moving, so I'm using the heat gun instead of the torch. It's, again, on a medium setting, and I don't have the nozzle tip on here. It's just the open end, starting to push the resin against one another. Add a little bit more because it wasn't moving too much. If it's too thin, you're not going to get good movement. So if you see you have a thin spot, add just a little bit more resin and get ready to push it around. Here comes the white. Now I wait until the end to add the white. If you add the white too soon, you'll get a muddy white. It'll just drift in as you're working with it and it'll blend in your colors. I want the white to work to make a nice contrast against this. I'm gonna go for getting lacing in here. So I'm working with my heat gun and the torch. I'll zoom in to this spot down here. And you can see I use the heat gun to blow and then I pop it with a blast from the torch. And that superheats it and allows me to stretch that white pigment. And that's what creates the lacing in there. So you can see it just, it's so pretty when it does that. So about now I'm at a time of I think it's about 30 minutes. So I'm starting to run out of time to work well with my resin. If you don't watch your time, it could end up getting too thick. And the more you try to work it, the more you're going to actually scorch your resin. Once it starts setting up and that thermal reaction is happening, that's when it's going to really get thick and you can't push it and manipulate it. So watch your timing. I actually have a clock that is within my viewing and I can keep track of how much time I have left. I always look at it when I'm getting ready to start and work away. So I'm just manipulating areas on the board. Again, use that heat gun. That's going to blow it. And then I come in and do really fast pops with my torch to kind of superheat those areas. So let's zoom in here and I'll show you heating it up and then coming back in with that torch and then blowing it again. And that's what stretches that white pigment, causes that 
beautiful lacing that we all love so much. It's really so pretty. Now at this point, I've been stepping back from the table, looking at the piece. So here I decide I'm going to add in a little bit of vein across some of these uh, spots, breaking up those heavy lines and moving in some more color. And you just kind of do what you think works well. Everybody has their own techniques and what looks good to them, but you'll spot some things as you're working. You can tease out a little bit of this. Um, this is the transparent turquoise blue, and I like to put that over top of the gold. You get some really nice shading through there. It'll allow that metallic to brighten up and come to the surface. Again, having the powder part component in there is what gives that lift and it comes right to the surface. You don't want to be shy on using that. It really is pretty and catches the light so nicely. All right, I know I'm all done pouring, so I'm going around with a popsicle stick, scraping the drips that have run over the edge and are kind of hanging on to that tape on the back. I want to remove them so that it doesn't create too much of an issue for me later on. You want to do that early on. Don't wait on getting those drips off of there. So I'm just going around like that. And then I'm going to set up my yogurt cups and a platform. I'm just using another canvas here. And then I'm going to cover it with a cheap plastic drop cloth to keep the dust particles from settling in. And it's now the next day. I've batched up some more of the Counterculture DIY Artist Resin. I'm using a tool that I have. It's got a serrated edge that helps to flow the resin evenly across the surface. I use my gloved hand, make sure that I've got good coverage on the edges, and then I'm going to just cover it up one more time and say good night. We'll see you tomorrow. Okay, it's the next morning. I've already removed the cover and taken it off of my stands underneath. So there's the piece. Now it's really important to remove the tape while wow, this is still slightly soft. So this is cured overnight and I'm going to be taking the tape off. Now remember, the first coat was done more than 24 hours ago and you want to get this tape off early so that it doesn't ruin, it. you know, the longer it cures, the harder it is to get. So I'm going to get that off of there. I have an X-Acto knife and I have my heat gun and this is to protect it even from the top because that top surface layer is still slightly soft. So I don't want to damage that at all. So I've got this down here, but what I need to do is I need to pick it up so that I don't melt this foam. It's actually foam, like packing foam for dishes or something like that. So let me get this over here and I'm going to lift it. And I'm going to put my heat gun on a low setting. That's all I need is just a little bit. All right, so. Okay, so I didn't need my knife at all. That's good. And you can see I got a little bit of overspray from my white spray paint, but no big deal. Didn't really matter too much. Now, I'm going to try to bring this in close. So, let's see. Right here, where the tape was at the edge, when I rubbed my finger on it, it's just slightly sharp. Okay, and, and you know, you can't avoid that. So what I like to do is I like to take a nail file and very carefully, I just take off that little sharp lift, lip. I got a lisp in my lip. Anyway, so that's what I'm going to work on next. And then we'll put the... Uh, yeah, what do you call it? The mechanical piece for the Lazy Susan back on there. All right. 
All right, so that's all cleaned up. Got all those drips off. I can run my hand really quickly on that edge and there is nothing there that's gonna cut my fingers. So I had uh, some dust on there from using the file on there. And what I like to do is this is 91% alcohol in a mist bottle. I just spritz a paper towel just barely to get damp. And I use that to collect any of the dust, go around the edge. If you use a soaking wet towel, you could actually make marks in your resin because any of the dust is an abrasive. Think about that. It's the resin and it's a, an abrasive, so it could leave scratches. So you don't want to do that. Okay, let's get this on the back. Here is our little handy dandy turntable that we removed. And now I have to get it to stay on there and I'm looking for where my center is. Let's do it that way. I'm going to line that up. Maybe, maybe sort of kind of make sure that my track is on there properly. Yep. And then we're just gonna screw that back down. Okay. And flip it over. We don't need that anymore. Set it on a flat surface. And there's the Lazy Susan. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. All right, let's get outside, get some pictures of this beauty. Here it is out in the bright light of day. This piece is so pretty. I'm really happy with my color choices. Teals are always popular, so you can't lose. It just has a great look. The layering between the opaques and the transparent, that gold popping through and the lacing from the white, they're all spectacular. All my products are listed in the, in the description box for the video, so look there if you're interested. If I have a discount code, I'll list it in there as well. And remember, enjoy working with your resin. This is a hobby and it should be a lot of fun. And thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time here on Mooncuster Art. Don't forget to subscribe.